If you have always been annoyed with Revit section heads, elevation heads, level heads, and grid heads, well, uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually fully customize that in a few minutes. Let's go. Now, quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours of content dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. I have this project with a few elements and we're going to be going over all of those, but let's get started with sections. So I have a couple of sections here. Let's select this one and see what do we have for options. So the first thing that you'll notice when you select a section is that you have this little button to cycle section heads. When you click on that, basically nothing will happen. Now, keep in mind, I'm using the current new uh, template from Revit 2024, and the sections here are a little bit different than they were before in previous templates. So basically what we have here is when we toggle this, you will notice that both sections turn black. Now here we have a section and one side is blue, one side is black. What that means is blue is link, so that means clickable, black is not clickable. So if I take this section, I double click here, nothing happens. I double click here on the blue spot, it's going to open up that section in this view uh, or that section view. So basically blue means clickable. So now the second section head is just a non clickable section head. And then when I continue the cycle, it's going to show an option with no section head and then it's going to go back to that uh, blue clickable section head. So there we go. Those are the options that we have with this particular family. However, we can edit this and we can get more out of it. So let me move this off to the side a little bit, select it, and then let's open up the edit type dialog. Here you can see the type properties and the section tag that's used is the section head filled filled. So what this basically means is this is the family that's used for the section tags. Now this is referring to both sides. So if I click on this, you can see we have this little button with three dots that's going to open up yet another menu. And here we can set up individually both of the options. So here we have the option for a section head and then for the section tail. Currently, they're both set to section head filled. Now, what happens if I go to this one and say section head no arrow and head apply? Well, now we have a one without an arrow. Then we also have an open one. So we can have those different types of section heads. Now, when it comes to the section tail, we have some multiple options as well. We actually have more tails. So let's check out this one. This one is really small. This is something that you've already seen in the previous versions of Revit. The default templates used to have these. Uh, and then we have the we have this one even bigger. And then we have some horizontal ones. So you can use that as well if you want. So basically just different sizes for uh, these uh, these tails. Now I'm just going to go back to filled. So if you want to make a change here, let me just hit apply to go back to the original one. And then finally here we have the option of broken section display style. What this means, it's set to gapped. And here we have the option to set it to continuous. So what this means is if I just cancel out all of this, here we have the option to add a gap in the middle. However, if we open this back up and then open this up and change it from gap to continuous, hit apply, it's just going to have this dashed or dotted line instead of that one with a gap, which we can adjust manually where we want it to be. So that's basically just what that is referring to. Okay, so now let's say we want to make a change to this uh, section head or this section and we want something new. How do we do that? properly. Well, we need to select it, go into edit type, and first we need to change this family. So duplicate and let's call it the new building section. Then click OK. Then you want to go to the section tag, click here, open up those type properties. And here you also want to duplicate this one. So let's call this one filled tail. Then click OK. And then here I'm just going to switch this to this tail, for example. Yeah, let's go with that one. And then I'm just going to click OK, apply, OK. 
and now it's just going to switch to that family. So we have a new family type, but we also have a new section tag type. So that's basically how you can edit these. Now, of course, you can take it even further by changing the actual uh, section tag. Now, let's say you want to completely change this uh, section head and you want to do something completely different. Well, you can. You can go here to the project browser and then I'm going to scroll all the way down until we find families. Here they are. Expand the menu for families and then you want to expand annotation symbols. And here you want to search for M sections. Here we go. M section head. And as you can see, we have multiple options. So I'm just going to select the first one, the M section head field, right click and then click on edit. And that's going to open up the um, family editor. And here I can edit this family. Now, because you want to completely change it, it makes sense to go here to file, save as, and then save it as a new family. I can save it on my desktop as the M section head new. Click save. And now we can start making some changes. So first I want to get rid of this circle. I do not need it. Then I'm going to get rid of this line, this line here, or this filled region, this, this filled region. Then I can extend this line to the other side. Now I'm going to select it, go to copy, and then let's copy it up by 1.5 millimeters. Hit the escape key a couple of times. Then I'm going to get rid of this filled region. And let's now select this line, move this edge up, move this end here, move this end here, and this one up here. And then finally, let's select this filled region and go into edit sketch. And then I'm just going to delete all of these lines and I'm going to use the pick lines in order to pick these lines like that. Hit finish. So we have something that looks like this. Now let's select the labels and this one I'm going to move here and then this one I'm going to move here. Now when you move these labels, you really want to pay attention to the alignment. So here we have the horizontal alignment and if I change it from center to left, can see it's going to go all the way up to here. That's okay. Then you just bring it back. Same thing goes with this one. You change it to left. It's going to escape and then you just bring it back in. Perfect. Okay. So once we have created this unique new section head, again, we can hit save and then let's load it into the project and close. So now it's loaded into the project and now I can select this section. I can go into edit type. We have this new building section, so that's okay. Then let's open this one up, the section tag. Now here, let's uh, change this. So I'm just going to duplicate this one and let's call this one, it's instead of filled, let's call it new and then tail. Just like this, click OK. And then I'm just going to change the tail to the smaller one and the section head, I'm going to change to the new one. And then let's hit apply, OK, apply, Okay, and this is what we get. As you can see, we have that new section head and most importantly, it's clickable. So if we double click, it's going to open up the uh, section. And then of course, if we select the section, I can toggle in between these. So that's how you can completely customize your section heads in Revit. And now let's move over to levels and show what we can do there. So I'm just going to double click here on this elevation. So that's going to give me the levels and let's see how we can edit these. So when you select a level, what you'll notice first is that the level head or the level bubble is only going to appear here on the right side. So that's one thing to note. Then when we select this and go into edit type here, we're going to have some options. So the first option here is line weight. So you can make that line thicker. If you want, you can change the color. So want to make it pinkish. You can do that. Then we have the line pattern. You can change the line pattern to something like 1.5 millimeter. And then, yeah, see, it's dashed 1.5 millimeter line. Then we have the symbol. Now, for the symbol, we only have the circle option and the no bubble option. And we can have no symbol whatsoever, but that will get rid of the text as well. So, just something to keep in mind. Let's then hit apply. And then here, this is the, the option for symbol. So see how the symbol is only set or the default symbol is only set at end two. So this is end two. However, if we check it on end one, it's also going to appear here on the left side. So there we go. That's how we can play around with these uh, elevation or level symbols. 
Now, of course, we can customize them even further. So just like sections here, we can look for levels in the families in the project browser. So here I have the M level head circle. So I can select that one. I can right click and go into edit. And then here, let's again save this so file, save as family, and I'm just going to call this one new hit enter. Now, one of the main complaints that I get from people when it comes to pretty much all of these datum elements is that they're too large. So you can actually make them smaller really easy by selecting the circle, going here to scale, you can make it numerical scale 0 0.7, making it kind of 70% of the full size and then just click in the middle and it's just going to make the whole thing smaller, which is good. Uh, same thing goes for text. So well, it's not the same thing, you can't really scale text. However, you can go here to label and then you can go into edit type and you can duplicate this one, call this one the two millimeter, for example, click OK, and then you can make this two millimeter text and you can even change the font if you want Times New Roman for some reason. And then it's, yeah, it's going to look like that. So you, you can make changes to the text or the labels as well. And uh, once we're done with this, we can just hit save. We can load that back into the project and close it. And now let's open up that uh, elevation, select the level, go into edit type. And then here we should have another option, which is new. And then when I hit apply, as you can see, it's going to be smaller and the text for the level is going to have another font and the text is going to be uh, smaller as well. And basically it's the pretty much same procedure when it comes to your elevation symbols, your grid symbols and so on and so forth. So for all of these, you can find them here in the project browser. You can completely edit them and then you just select the family itself, go into edit type and search for just where that symbol is. And then you can add another family that you have just created. So I hope you feel now a bit more powerful when it comes to Revit and uh, just making it uh, possible to create uh, perhaps a little bit more interesting designs in terms of these datum elements. If you would like to get access to this Revit project file or any of my other Revit project files, you can find those on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link link up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching guys. Make sure to check out my website balkanarctic.com for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.